Okay, so I've done a little bit of research on those parts which I found were measuring strangely of Bob Blown. Right, so I've got that 2N3906 there, common part. I get those locally from JCAR, so I've ordered a bunch of those. So I'll just replace it when they turn up. Now, this part here, the LM123, is supposed to be a 5 volt 3 amp voltage regulator. Now, I got some weird readings thinking I was just a transistor, but that's, if it's a regulator, it's a bit different because you might get weird readings of it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hook it up to my power supply and we'll see what happens and we'll see if it actually works because that might be that part is absolutely fine. Um, the other part is the LM, uh, sorry, the 2N1711. Uh, that's going to be a bit more elusive. But, uh, we'll see how we go with that. So let's chuck power in this and casing is the ground and input is this pin here okay very little very little current usage so that's probably okay let's see what the output voltage is so this part may be absolutely fine five volts that part's right nothing wrong with it so i'm going to put that back in and i'm going to uh and um I shall assume this part's okay and put that back in so that at least leaves that part there and that part there to sort out. This one I'm not worried about, this one I'm a little bit concerned about. I might have to take it out and just reread it and just check it, but I think it might be a voltage regulator actually. Um, I should actually relook at that. I don't think it was. Well, so let's put some of this uh, thermal compound on. This is this little cheap stuff I got from AliExpress. Thermal grease, but see it's only half full. <laughs> yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. It's purchased by volume, I suppose. I don't know if the volume's right, but anyway. So I put some thermal grease on there. I'm going to put it back in. So that's at least one part which I think is is okay because that you know that seems to function. All right. So I've pulled out this uh, transistor here because this one gave me some suspicious readings, which I'm suspecting is faulty. Um, I should actually give you an update. Actually, shouldn't I? But I've done doing this bits and pieces of work on this. Um, that transistor there. It's 5 volt regular, works fine. I've put a heat shrink compound on that, that's been installed. This transistor here is blown. Uh, I've ordered some more parts for that, and now I've got to take this one here to see what's going on with that. So, um, I'm suspicious about it. I don't think it works based on the weird readings I was getting, but now it's out of circuit, this will tell me for sure if it's got an issue or not. So look, diode to diode junctions, that doesn't sound good. Showing, showing two connections between cathode and anode, 0.7 volt drop. Right, so yeah, it's it's no good. Um, I can verify that using multimeter actually, just to verify that it's not some weirdness going on there. Well, you got it ready to go. Just want to be short. So, do you know two pins? Yeah, I'm saying oh, 0.6. That's good luck. Any other way? Open circuit, yep. Nothing that way. So, that way there, I'm getting a reading. Yep, it's at 0.6 there. That way there, nothing. Like every combination, yeah, there's nothing there. That pin is just, yeah, that pin stuff. Yep, so this part is definitely fried, definitely fried. So I'm gonna have to get some more of these. Um, but the problem is, these are listed as being obsolete naturally, so. Let's just verify the number again, just to be absolutely sure I've got that right. Now it's out of the circuit, I can see it's a little bit easier. Uh, okay, this is Jan 2N1711. And yeah, I mean, what if, that's what I thought I'd read before. So, I need to figure out how I'm going to replace this thing. Um, See, it's obsolete.
Hmm, could be interesting. Might have to substitute something. Right, so I've had a look, little look through my um, stash of obsolete old parts, which I've got a bunch of, well, various ones of, which I've collected over the years. And I have these. Now, these are not the right parts. And um, the specs are similar. They have the same pinout. Specs are similar. They are different, but they might just work. Um, these are uh, PFY56 um, MPN, which is what the original part is. Now, although the specs are slightly different, that may not matter. So I'm just going to do a quick test and see if actually if they're even you know functional. They might not be even working. Um, but the pinout's the same. And they can take the similar voltages and it's got the same current rating. Um, I think it's actually might be slightly higher. They think it's rated at one amp. One watt dissipation, that's 0.8 watts dissipation or something. So they've actually got a slightly better spec in that way, I think. Uh, um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I'd rather get a proper part. But it looks like it's okay. HFE 103 which is in the range it's supposed to be between 30 and 150 depending on the current going through it so yeah it's, yeah so it's looking good let's try the other one see if there's much difference between the two is that of interest That looks like it's okay as well. Gain 66. Um, other things look about the same. So this one's got slightly lower gain than that one, but yeah, I don't know. Does it matter? Probably not. It's a power supply regulator. I doubt it's going to be a particularly you know, big deal. Um, unfortunately, I don't know what the gain of this original part was at its operating condition. So, so I'm going to try putting one of these ones in. And um, we shall risk that. That would mean I've only got that one transistor to get. Um, I don't believe there's any other faults on this board. I might just more thoroughly just check every single part, every resistor, and that kind of thing. And um, just to be absolutely sure, I'll say I, there's parts on here which are not easy to get. <laughs> so we'll go from there. Right, let's solder this thing in. Actually, I should probably put some bit of flux on this because it's been sitting around in my parts bin for a while, so let's just uh, try and help it a little bit. It's fortunate that I've had a part which is similar with the same pinout and has similar specs. They're not the same, they're not exactly the same, there are differences. And I don't know if those differences are going to matter. They might matter. Um, but I don't know until I actually try it. And you know, the alternative is to try and find something else. So, you know. Do what you can. Alright, so that's that's all nice solar flow for the other side. So looking good. Um, all right, give this a clean. I've given the rest of the board a bit of a clean, but it needs some more. I've actually thickened up this trace that's going through here too with a bit of solder. It didn't look very good. Because um, those are, you know, high current traces. So I've well, given a bit more. No harm in that. I probably put a note somewhere on the board saying that um, I've changed some parts. I'll clean this up a little bit around here as well. Even though those parts tested okay, I'll just get it clean. I'll just give me this little cloths. Need some more. It's a bit sticky this board.
This is joint just here, it looks a little bit dodgy. I might just resolder those just to be sure they're okay, actually. Better than it was. <laughs> anyway, again, I won't be able to try this yet, so I've got to do a whole bunch of other things. Um, and put some heat sink comment on that. Uh, I'll want. I need to uh, measure all the power supply rails within the unit to make sure there's no shorts or anything on the power supply rails before I actually put all this back in and, and try powering it for the first time. So I have to measure each set of power rails um, and check for any issues there with excessive current draw or, or at least low resistance, that kind of thing. To see if anything looks like, you know, when the supplies are, are shorted out because I don't want to do all this and then blow it up and I put it back in because there's some fault somewhere else. Um, so I mean, I've, I've replaced, well, these caps so far and other things which I found were faulty. So that may be part of the problem. but. Anyway, we'll see. I just noticed something. Over here is another 1711. Same part as I just replaced, which will tell me what the gains are. So I'm going to probe on that. Hopefully, find out what the gain is. Just out of interest. Um, obviously, this is this should be a working part. Now, this is going to be a little bit tricky, because I can't actually get onto the leads. Um, so I've got to try and probe it. By sticking all the bits on there. And balance on the end of all the leads. Oh, that fingers oh, well. Hopefully that will get contact. Diode network. Okay. That's not very helpful. So it sees it as a diode, which may be because of circuitry around it, I don't know, but anyway. This will try. Oh, turn it off. Hold the right button. I think there's another one. I think that was it. So, yeah. I don't know. I believe that part's okay. It shows double diode. But, uh, anyway, here's what it is. Bit of a mystery, but there we go. So, I noticed that when I was looking at the circuit diagram for this, that this part isn't the right one because this part here is the same as this one here. Right? So, that's Q6 and Q17 are the same part. Now, on the diagram here, they're different. So, there's Q6 and there's Q17. All right. And on the parts layer, or parts descriptions, uh, Q6 and Q17 are not the same part, because if they're the same, they would have put them together. Um, if you follow this across, 3, three watt TO5 package 289819 is Q6. And Q17 is also, well it's a 5 watt, it's actually a higher wattage apparently. Um, and it's a 60904. So they're not the same parts. Um, so that's very interesting. I mean that's manufacturer's generic stuff, so I mean, yeah. It's probably a fleet part number. Um, so I think that part which is in there actually wasn't the original one. Now also what I've, what I've done is I've thought about this and that this has got these extra holes here. I'm thinking what are they for? Well if you look at the other ones, they've got this heatsink assembly on here and there's two holes. So I think they're supposed to be on these heatsink assemblies in here. Now what also confirmed that to me, if I find the right picture, is that on the picture for the board, there it is, it shows these three boxes. So that says to me that's one of those heat sink units. So I think the original part is blown and they've been replaced with this other part which is now also blown because it's overheated. Because they haven't put adequate heat sinking on it. Yeah. So what I've done now is I've um, changed this heat sink from that little disc 
piece to a proper little heat sink unit here like this which will hopefully be good enough I'll have to obviously see what happens as far as um, how hot that gets whilst it's running but um, it's obviously not the same thermal mass as these but uh, yeah we'll have to see I might have to beef this up even further you know, but I'm not quite sure how I'll do that yet but yeah so it looks like that's actually the wrong part so that's very interesting. It's probably get these things which someone else has already been repairing, and also like this part here, um, that's been resoldered in this part. So that's probably not the original part either. I mean the part numbers don't match. So these parts, these uh, uh, two N one seven one ones, probably aren't actually the right parts. It is some substitutes that someone's chucked in there. So hmm, could be tricky. So I'm still working on this board here and the. Transistors, this one here is blown. I've actually already unsoldered it, I'll just pop it back in place so you can see. That's a 2N3906, and that one there is a 2N3904. So that's a 3906, that's a 3904, so a PMP, MPN, so that's the MPN, that's a PMP. It's all simple enough. Alright, so, and that is Q11 here, and Q11, let's double check it, sure enough, 3906, and Q10 over there is a full across it goes to 2N3904 so those parts that are in there are the correct parts which is fine so you think okay well why am I querying this well the reason being is that if you look at the actual board layout if you look at the transistor orientations they don't match the orientation that's here so 11 matches 10 doesn't so you would think the orientation is um, would be correct since it's specifying the correct part. So I'm going to actually do some checking on the actual connections on this board to make sure the parts are actually end up right around. So after having a closer look um, on the circuit diagram here, comparing it with the parts, um, yes, it's actually the part. Those two parts are correctly orientated. So although it says it that way around on this layout, it's actually wrong. So that's a nice thing to watch out for if you've got one of these units and you're replacing these parts. Make sure you get them right around. Because that could be a bit of a disaster if you don't. Um, yeah. Next thing I want to show you is this part. So that's the one which I've I measured in circuit as being blown. Where's my test gone? Here it is. So let's see what actually comes out as out of circuit. Just to be absolutely sure it's definitely this part which is gone. Could be something else, you never know. Right, so this is the 2N3906. Short circuit, red, green, blue. Yeah, okay, so all three pins are short together, which is what I measured in circuit, so that part is 74. So I've ordered some more of those anyway, I was waiting for them to turn up. It shouldn't be too long, it's from a local source, so they might be here tomorrow. That's about all I can do for now. Um, I've put that little top hat thing here which is on that transistor originally onto this one replace that transistor put a bigger heatsink on it to try and help it because it's supposed to be like this this big heatsink um, which you'll see that's just a pass transistor so it's um, Q6 was uh, Q6 is up here somewhere Q6 that's a P, that's an MPN pass transistor so if I had to I could actually use an external transistor and mount it on like the side panel or something um, you know, even on a chassis or this or something like that, I could just mount it somewhere else remotely once the wires down. Because um, all it is is a voltage regulator, pass transistor. So, you know, I could use anything for that really, um, as long as the upper voltage is about right, it should be good. Um, I might require some more smoothing or something, but I mean, yeah, don't know. But we'll see how these go first. If this gets too hot, that's what I have to do is look at uh, changing that to a proper, well, to a different kind of transistor. Because obviously, it doesn't have the same amount of heatsink as it used to have. Alright, so these uh, parts are arrived. These are the 2N3906, um, which I need to use on this power supply regulator board. So, there's a the part I've already desoldered. I left it in place so I could make sure I got the orientation correct because the actual pads are back to front. I've already verified that these are correct as per the circuit diagram. Um, the part does go in backwards. It, um, the actual layout board. Um, the layout of the board is, is back to front. I don't know why they would have done that, but anyway. Um, let's install this. 
then I think once I've done that I can't really test much else. I've already done a whole bunch of testing with the um, actual main unit. I've gone through and um, done resistance tests on the, all the power supply outputs on the actual back plane of the board or the, of the unit so that if there's an issue there you know, like a shorted card or something like that it should have shown up they all looked okay so I don't think there's any actual well no obvious issues with the actual main unit which would cause a power supply to blow nothing obvious um, but we shall see Let's get this soldered in. Then I'm actually quite close to uh, being ready to do reassemble it and well at least reassemble the module for the power supply and test those individually because I'm actually I'm loath to put this back into the unit so I'm sure the power supply sections are okay. So I'm going to try and um, do some testing. Uh, outside of the unit. At least that's the plan. This main module which weighs a ton. I think this is almost it's almost like a quarter of the weight of the actual unit. It's just this power supply section. So I've already gone through and checked everything else. Um, there's only a couple of things I'm unsure of. Uh, I think these capacitors here are quite high resistances, but I'm not sure if that's normal for those or not. They're only quite low voltage in there. Oh, so there's a 400 volt caps and stuff like that, so I'm not quite sure if they're right or not, but I'm suspicious about those. But I don't have anything to replace them with at the moment, so the card drops in there. Like that. And that's the module. So that's the whole power supply section. Now, um, on that in there, that's the edge connector which goes into the main back plane of the, uh, of the unit. So that delivers all the power supplies. And on this end is the AC input connector. So what I'm actually going to do, that looks a lot like a um, a PC drive connector. So it looks like the same kind of format. If it, it might be the same. Um, so the the wires on the unit don't reach this if this isn't installed. But I don't want to install this until I've tested it. So I'm going to hopefully um, use a, a PC supply connector and just jump across and extend it a little bit so I can plug this in and test it out of the unit and verify the power supplies are working without you know putting anything excessive out but we'll see how we go with that right so I've got the power supply sitting on top of the unit I couldn't find a cable I've got some somewhere I just can't find them so it just reaches where it's sitting like that so it's plugged in the cable is plugged into the back for the unit to power it switches in the off position and I was going to plug the power cable in for the first time and going to see what happens. It might go bang, it might be fine, it might fizzle, or who knows. So let's give it a go. Okay, power cable plugged in. Nothing bad's happened yet. Let's turn the switch on. The fan starts up. No bangs. I just want to give this some time to prove itself or otherwise. And then I'll power it back down again and fill for any um, hot big layers and that sort of thing in case there's any problems. Give it a bit of chance to actually do its thing. I smell dust. Can't smell anything burning. That's always a bonus. Turn it back up again. We'll check for anything that's hot. 
unplug it. Now this regulator is a low voltage, so they should be fine. I can't feel any heat there. Nothing there. That feels alright. That feels alright. There is high voltage stuff here, so I was gonna be careful to touch those. Those feel okay. So, so far, so good. This ball, no heat on it. So what I might do, actually, is I'll come back in a minute and I'll get my thermal camera out and do some other testing with that and see if that shows anything up, things which I cannot touch. All right, so I've got the thermal camera out. Let's turn it on again. See if we can see anything. The fan certainly sounds like it's had better days. Hot just down here. Just having a hot spot on this one, but just over here. And there's a hot resistor just down there as well. As it appears to be. see a hot spot on this board as well. It might just be the metal casing of the regulator. I think it's probably what it is actually. It's perfectly round so I think it's what it is. So, so there's something hot down there. So there's three resistors down there and they're all hot. Um, about 47 degrees. That's about 32 degrees or so. Partless hot net board is about 36. Let's do that again from this side. About 36 degrees, so it's not too bad, but I'd like to know what that is because there's no current going through this ball. So let's just uh, shut it down again. Which region is that in? Drink my finger about the right place so I can see where it is because it's offset. So, uh, right there. Right there. So that is by that transistor. So that transistor there appears to be maybe getting warm. But no, I can't feel any heat there. Not really feeling anything. So it might be okay. But as this is down here being a bit warm is interesting, I have to look at and see what that is actually doing. Shut us down again. So, great tool. Fleur, if you ever watch this, I could use a better one. I'm sure you wouldn't mind having a product featured here on my channel. Alright, so I've had a little look on the um, layout for that particular board. I didn't have that one printed out for some reason, but I had a look at the diagram on the uh, manual and those resistors that are getting hot are across the capacitors um, there's one I just want to check as well because it, it could be an issue if, if they're not all getting warm so you check there's one more down here which I need to make sure it's actually warming up because uh, it should be if it's not then it could be a bad capacitor so we've got R37 R38 R39 which are in there. R39 is the hottest one. R40 is down there. So R39 and R40 should be similar temperatures. Um, R37 and R38 look fairly equal. R39 
about 34 degrees right now. And my 40, which is down here, right, that's warming up, that's fine. That is also that's about 39 degrees right now. 45, 49, 49 there. So those are actually across the capacitors that discharge them when they um, when they're powered down. This one is running a little bit cooler, but uh, yeah, I mean they're all right. It's it's kind of what I'd expect. They're a bit warm, but um, you know it's not surprising. So there's nothing abnormal there, um, apart from that hot spot I was getting around here, which is a little bit interesting. Even though I couldn't feel anything being hot. So, um, I'm showing the diagrams as parts of them a bit. So, we have the capacitors here R37, R38. Close. Right, R37, R38 here. Across these capacitors, discharge them. And there's R39 and R40 here, um, which are across these capacitors. So, these ones are running a little bit hotter than these. It's probably normal, depends on what the voltages are. These ones are running on 190 volts. Um, these ones here are running on 300 volts. Um, these are 200k, and those are 790k. So, yeah, it's probably fine. Those are lower values, so, and this voltage is what, less than half. So, yeah, that's right. That's what I'd expect. I expect those ones to be hotter. So, that all seems fine. Um, if I was seeing one hot, one not, then that would mean there's no voltage across there. Um, and that one there could be overheating because the you know, capacitor's you know, working, but that one's not, you know. So um, that all, that's all fine. So it tells me that at least those supplies and those points are probably okay. So I need to do voltage measurements yet. So I need to find out what all the test points are and, um, and go from there. But uh, so far, so good. Right, so I'm just going to start going around and trying to measure these test points. So I'm going to start over here. Um, so we got pin one is 15 volt zero row. Um, pin 11 is plus 15 volts, and pin 13 is minus 15 volts. So let's verify those ones are there first, and then I'll move on. So pin one is this end here. I've already put some numbering on here to help me track the pins. Uh, so that's nine. So that's nine there, so it'd be 11. 15.5 volts and that'd be 13. Minus 15.3 volts. So that's within a little bit, then you know half a volt or so. So those ones there check out okay. So let's just knock these off. And I'll come back and work on the next one. Alright, so these ones are a little bit tricky. I've got to try and get um so there's a 5 volt supply just here, which is on pins 8 and 10 combined. Right, so 5 volts here, 8 and 10, and the shares are coming ground, I believe. So I'm going to because the ground from this one here, pin 1, comes down to this system. So that's TP1, tube to ground. But pins 8 and 10 on here. Um, it's also TP2. Because of the way these balls are right now, it's actually really hard to see test points and get, and get to them without leaning over things. I don't want to do that because it's high voltage. I'd rather just test it all on this edge connector here. There's also high voltage on here, but at least I know roughly where they are. Um, so, 8 and 10, that should be 5 volts. Now, they're over here. Let's see if I can get onto them. So, I stick it on pin 1. It's a little bit tricky. Just got to make sure I line it up so I don't short anything out. There you go, 5.1 volts. So, that's okay. That one's working as well. Okay, so now I'm going to start strangely at the bottom edge here because this gets quite hard to follow through here, so I'm going to go through it all. But um, So I'll start the bottom edge over here and get some of these simple ones out of the way, and then I'll just work through it. It gets a bit trickier because it's got high voltages and things like that up here. Um, so this first slot here to look at is another plus 5 volt supply, which comes from that big regulator here. Um, on this board which I tested out of circuit because I wasn't sure what it was at the time and um, it tested okay out of circuit so I'm going to test it in circuit and see if anything's changed in case there's an issue with any of this stuff 
Um, so that is going to be uh, pins 79, 80, 81, 82, uh, plus 5 volts, and the 0 volt side is where? Pins 84, 85, I think that is, or is it 86 and 85? So that's 85 there. So that'd be the 0 volt rail because it's a nice beefy one, so I'm guessing that'd be right. And then I want like 79, which is right next to it, so that's quite convenient. So I should better measure across those two. So let's do that. Yep, 4.99 volts. That's absolutely fine. So that one there is also good. So that's that one there verified. And there's also a negative 15 here, which shares the same negative, is it like a star grounding point just here? Um, a bit closer for you. So this is a star ground, which is used as a main re reference for a lot of supplies. Not all of them, some of them are actually isolated from each other. Um, okay, so 15 is, well, minus 15 is on pin 71, so we'll look for that. This is right there, 69, 71 be that one. I'm getting minus 3, which means the right reference point, let's say minus 8 there, so yeah, okay. That one may not be running. It's floating around a little bit as well. Let's just reference that to the other rail. Pin one over here. I think it's script one. Yeah, so so I don't think that rail is working. I'm gonna have to look at that into small detail. But um, so that's that one there. I'm trying to measure there. Um, should I got the correct pins? Maybe looking at the wrong connector. No, it's right. So pin 71 is definitely correct. Uh, it should be coming from over here, which is Q16. Um, Q16 is familiar. Why is that familiar? Oh, that's that big one up here. I think it was that one there, was it? I'm trying to remember now. Let me have a look. Right below that, right here. Q6 is that one. Ah, oh, sorry, Q6. Q16 is that bigger one here, so that's actually that one right there. That's Q16 here. Um, so I need to check uh, the references on that. That's got a negative, it's a negative reference to PNP. So it's a negative reference there. Reference against minus 30 supply. So maybe reference, maybe what minus 30 supply is not working as possible. But also has this U2 regulator, so it's possible that regulator's um, controller is playing up. Um, so I'm going to dig into this a bit more, and I'll come back after I've done that. So I've just done a quick little test on this um, by going straight onto the, the transistor itself. So I use the ground rail there, and that is 28 volts. So the minus 30, 30 volt supply is there, that's minus 28. And I'm getting minus 3.5 out of that pin and minus 2.8 there. So 3.5, 2.8 is about 0.7. So the transistor itself seems to be working because the voltages make sense. And there might be something else going on there, which I need to look into in more detail. Alright, so I was looking at this board here, I thought, well, I can't get to the test points easily from that side. Um, but I can get to them from this side if I use the layout to work out where they are. So, okay. Um, I haven't resol resolved the issue down here with that minus 15 volt valve yet. I haven't figured that out. Um, I'm going to come back to that. Um, just in case there's something else which is going on which is causing that issue. So, um, I'm going to look up here. So, we've got this supply, got the plus, uh, plus and minus 15 volts, and there's also a plus 20 volt supply. Uh, from this regulator here, which looks like it's actually got a feed it says reference power supply and error control. So I think it's actually got like a closed loop regulator through the connector. So these voltages might not actually be correct. Um, based on the fact that they actually they feed the, the op amp which is doing the regulation. 
so I think that I may get voltages I may not I have to see what I actually find so um, the reference supply is going to be a good question reference let's go back to the here let's have a look center tap so that would be reference coming through here I think that's 9, TP9 and that's there which is going to be that test point right there should be the, the 0 volt reference um, so then we got TP10 and TP11 are the plus and minus 15 volts which are directly above those so it's those two there so let's do this so it's 0 volts that's plus 27 volts that's minus 27 volts thereabouts so they're both going flat out because it should be plus or minus 15 um, and then we've got the 20 volt reference here I believe it's 20 volts, it looks like 20 volts um, which is TP12 which is over here there's TP12 there so I'm just going to put these papers out, touching things I shouldn't be touching. So TP12 is over there. So let's try that one. That's 28 volts. So, okay, yeah, I'll set that one to be high. Because it is straight from that pass regulator right there the pass transistor goes straight through so these other ones go through a resistor is that right? you've got Zener diode there and there's a resistor dropping that side so yeah that one would be the highest one so that, that makes sense um, so that seems okay apart from the fact it's not actually regulating but I believe it's because it's sensing from this side here, so I may not be able to get anything on this until I actually plug it in. So I think that's probably okay. Um, so now I need to look at the next slot. There's a 15 volt sense which comes from these terminals and stuff, so yeah, that's all part of that circuit. I'll ignore that part for now. It's got power coming out, so it's probably okay. Um, there's a turn on delay circuit here, which has also got this plus or minus 300 volt and 190 volt circuits there um, don't see test point labels I suppose I can just trust that they're there I mean they are pretty much straight through from the power supply here um, If I it's got a common there, I'm trying to figure out how we've got this configured. So as those resistors I saw heating up before, if I measure across those, that should give me those voltages. So minus 190 that side. Plus 190 that side. Ah, sorry, that's 190 raw return. So that's the zero volt side. So that's plus, plus 190 that side, minus 190 that side. So if I measure across each of those resistors, that should give me those voltages. Um, so, okay, let's do that. That's our 40 and our 39, which are the hottest ones I saw before. Okay, tentative to give them here without touching anything else. That's doing 275, interestingly. And now near. I'll get onto it. It's a bit tricky. I've got to just, uh, it's a bolt in the way, I don't want to get too close to that. I'll measure the other side, I should be able to get it combined. It's 551. So that's 275 times 2. Okay, 
So it's a bit off from the 190, but that's interesting. Maybe it's because it hasn't got any loading on it, it's not dragging it down. Um, I'll have to look into that one. But it can't really go wrong there, it's just the transform warnings. I'm pretty sure I've got the voltage set correctly on it. If it's setting correctly, it could increase that voltage, couldn't it? Um, so let's try this other one here, which is the 300 volt plus or minus 300 volt. What's that reference to? Uh, sit down. So that's the 300 volt there. That's to the upper of that one. So negative will come to that side. It does. Negative reference is the same as that one. So it's the same reference point over here. So if I just go across each of those resistors, I should get that reference here, there it's there. So if I go across each of those resistors again, R37, R38, actually giving us voltages, plus and minus 300 volt, in theory. Let's have a look. Three sixty four. It's not a good connection, I'm afraid. Not a good connection. Three sixty five. So those are working. So those will be passing through to this front panel which connector, which is why I'm you know, trying to keep away from it. Um, so those work out. So I've got this plus and minus 30 volts rail here. Now it's getting that minus 30 over here, maybe shared, because that's the only minus 30 volt rail on it. Um, so I need to ch check these ones. I don't see any test points marked. So I need to figure out how I'm going to reference those. That's style grounded to 85. So I need pin 68 and pin 70 for the plus and minus 30. And they're both on the bottom of that ball, which is making it hard to get to. Um, yeah, it's a little bit tricky. Let's see if I can pop that up a bit. 